concepts we are going to start organic chemistry what is organic chemistry and about which compounds we study in it we will be talking about this but first of all let us talk about organic chemistry itself organic chemistry is a part of chemistry and it is a very scoring part for our exams because 40 percent problems of the chemistry are from organic chemistry and if you make your organic chemistry strong then your chemistry becomes strong and with the strong chemistry the chances of selection becomes very high and it is also very easy and in this we need revision in fact therefore only i am telling you to learn chemistry very well basically organic chemistry and in the organic chemistry about which compounds we study in the organic chemistry we study about that compounds of carbon which are not inorganic such as CaCO3 H2CO3 all these are such compounds of carbon which are inorganic these are inorganic compounds therefore we don't study about them in the organic chemistry the compounds which we study in organic chemistry are somewhat like this CH4 methane ethane methyl alcohol and there are many 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 normally hydrogen is there and the first organic compound the first organic compound first organic compound formed by human in the laboratory is urea by heating ammonium cyanide we get urea and see the structure of urea it is somewhat like this although in it carbon is not directly attached to hydrogen then to it is an organic compound so in the organic chemistry we study about that compounds of carbon which do not come in the list of inorganic compounds which are not being classified like inorganic so in the organic chemistry what are the things which we have to study ultimately we have to study about the compounds of carbon and we will be studying about valency of carbon so the most important property of carbon about electronegativity we will be talking and we will be talking about bonding of carbon and we will be talking about the shape of carbon compounds we will be talking about their shapes so first of all let us talk about valency of carbon the valency of carbon is 4 and if we represent it in a normal plane then we represent it like this this is the method to represent it in a plane about which we will be studying that how we represent the structures of organic compounds there are many ways to represent the organic compounds basically to represent the structure of organic compounds so here all four bonds are single somewhere we denote the structure like this somewhere even we may find triple bond now in all these the bonding is different different hybridization is there about which we have already studied but we will be studying here once again so let us once again talk about electronegativity we have seen that electronegativity is 2.5 on the Pauling scale if I once again bring the Pauling scale here then see as compared to the nearby compounds as compared to the nearby elements how the electronegativity of carbon is there and now we will be seeing that according to hybridization the electronegativity it is different different and that is very important because in the organic chemistry mostly you study about the reactions of organic compounds and I have already told you in periodicity in bonding that what kind of bond will be there either it will be covalent it will be electrovalent it will be polar or non-polar all these depends upon the mutual electronegativity of atoms basically on the relative electronegativity of atoms and how much it is on the Pauling scale because in the organic chemistry we see CO bond we see CCL bond we see CN bond and also double bond we also see C double bond N even we see C double bond O even we see C triple bond N 
and even we see CH bond. And if you see in this way, then carbon and chlorine, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, etc., their relative electronegativity, or if we know the electronegativities, then we can tell about the bond that what kind of bond it will be. And with the other reactants, how will be its reaction? How the reaction will proceed and of what kind it will be? And if you remember a little bit, then oxygen, chlorine, their electronegativities is more than that of carbon, but the difference is not too much. Therefore, all the bonds are nearly covalent and yes, they are polar, so there is no problem in that. And if you know the bonding, then the organic chemistry becomes very easy for you. In fact, without understanding bonding, organic chemistry is very, very tough. So here we know that most of the bonds are polar, but the character is covalent and this is important. So the bonding of carbon is covalent and we will be assuming it. There is no doubt in it. So bonding and hybridization. If we see then hybridization, hybridization is very important in the case of carbon. So in the case of carbon, we will be seeing hybridization. And after that, once again, we will be talking about electronegativity because in different hybridization state, the electronegativity of carbon changes. And therefore, these bonds in them, basically the character of the bond and the reactivity will be different, different. And we should try to understand this. So if you understand it, then it is good because organic chemistry will be more simple with this. And if you are not able to understand it, then you have to memorize it. You don't have any option. You have to memorize it. And without understanding to memorize all these is very difficult. So let us try to understand it so that it is more easy for us. And shape. So why not to see simple structure and we see its hybridization and we see its shape and let us move forward. So hybridization of carbon which we have studied very well either for CH4 or CH3Cl or in CHCl3 in all of them there is a single bond of carbon and in all of them the hybridization is sp3 if all four are single bonds then the hybridization is sp3 hybridization and for this structure we denote somewhat like this. So this is a planar structure. Even we decide the 3D structure, but 3D structure is very difficult to draw in two dimensional plane. Therefore, we represent it somewhat like this. It is denoted somewhat like this. A solid wage is taken. This means that it is out of the plane. And in this way, a dashed wedge structure is taken. It means it is into the plane. So if we see the structure of CH4, then it will be somewhat like this. Now this means these two hydrogen atoms are in the plane. This is the solid wedge representation. That means it is out of the plane. And if you have drawn the wedge with a dashed, it means it is into the plane. That is into the plane. So into the plane means on other side of this plane, you can see on the other side of this plane and this one is coming out of the plane. This is also out of the plane, but in the backward direction, but trying to understand with such a structure is not interesting. So let us do one thing. See this three dimensional structure. Clearly it is seen these two are in a plane. These two are out of the plane. These two are behind the plane and it is a and it is a 3D structure of CH4. So representation is there in a number of ways in the 2D plane you are showing with a dash or such type of lines. This orbital. So this is the orbital picture. It can be the orbital picture. It can be the electron cloud density picture which we have studied a lot of time. In the atomic structure, we have studied this very well. So this is our sp3 hybridization. And the important thing which you have to understand about it, what it is. Now, how much is the S character in this? We have studied it that how to find the percentage of the character. So it has 25% as character. And as character is proportional to its electronegativity. 
If we see other compounds in which